Hey guys, Samantha Deal with Realizing Research, and today I'm going to be dissecting and imaging some fly brains. I know what you're thinking, why? Well, I'm a PhD student in biomedical sciences and I wanna find new regulators of dopamine. What is dopamine? Dopamine is a chemical that is used within the cells within our brain in order to send messages back and forth. If, for example, you have ever felt happiness after exercising or after completing a to-do list or after acing a test, that is dopamine. It's not only important in our reward system, it's also important for learning and memory and focus and sleep and even movement. Understanding what regulates dopamine can not only help us to understand those human behaviors, it can help us to treat human disorders such as sleep disorders or movement disorders. The first thing we need to do though is get our flies. Let's do it. These are adult fruit flies. They get their name from the fact that you often see them around fruit. They do eat fruit, but they're really attracted to the yeast from overripe fruit because it's the perfect spot to lay their eggs. And I'm going to be essentially removing their heads. In order to do this, I first want to strongly anesthetize them or knock them out. I'm going to anesthetize the flies using ice. This doesn't work on warm bodied species like mammals, but fish, insects, and reptiles cannot regulate their body temperature, and extremely low temperatures acts as anesthesia for them. Since these brains are about the size of a poppy seed, I need some special tools. I'll be using these lovely little pincers called forceps and of course, a microscope. I don't wanna upset anyone, so I won't show the dissection here, but there are a number of videos out there that you can find and I'll link some below. For those of you wondering why I'm working on flies, I mentioned before that I'm looking for new regulators of dopamine. And flies make a great species for this type of study because you can look at a whole bunch of potential proteins without spending a lot of time or money. Okay, so that only took me about a minute and a half. Now for the next one. Now that you have some beautiful brain samples, the next step is fixing them. When I say fixation, I mean that I will soak the samples in a chemical called paraformaldehyde. You have probably seen some jars with samples full of paraformaldehyde in a natural science museum or just some creepy basement. Now fixation takes about 20 minutes and you just have to wait for them to be done. So dance break. <laughs> Okay, now you've gotten a nice workout in and brains are fixed. You wanna wash off all that chemical. You do this three times using a solution similar to saline, but with a little bit of soap added into it. Now that soap pokes small holes in the tissue, which will help us stain it. So the next step is staining the tissue. So staining is accomplished using antibodies. Yes, very much like the antibodies you and I use in order to recognize viruses or fight off bacterial infections. But the difference is these ones have been designed in order to recognize my protein of interest. So the brains will need to sit an antibody solution overnight in order to get really good binding to that protein. All right, day two. First thing we need to do is wash the brains again and get rid of any extra antibody. We do it three times again. Then we have a staining round two. The second antibody does two things. The first is that it provides an actual signal. The most commonly used one is called green fluorescent protein. The second thing that it does is actually boost that signal. Now the first antibody can only bind to so many places on your protein protein, but because the second antibody can bind to that first antibody, it can bind to even more spots. And that allows us to get two to even 10 times the level of green signal. So after two hours in the second stain, we wash our samples one last time. Then we put them on the slides that work for imaging. Yeah, I am quite literally sealing this with nail polish, guys. Real fancy here. Finally, 
the fun part. So I'm using a confocal microscope, which is a fancy microscope that is worth more than my salary for the next 10 years. The great thing about this microscope is that it allows us to excite that green fluorescent protein and pick up exactly where it is down to the cellular level. This microscope works so well that it only shows you a very specific plane within your sample. So I'm now telling it exactly where the sample is and it's going to build that image plane by plane. You're going to see in red, the cells that send out dopamine or dopaminergic neurons. And in green are the cells where my protein is found. Let's see if there's overlap. red cells that are not green and green cells that are not red. This is typical in biology, but each experiment gets us a little bit closer to the answer. I've got a bunch more imaging to do, so until next time, bye-bye.